Hey everyone, Steve Powell here. Just got done with a powerful, powerful service up here in the north. Praise God, the Holy Spirit is moving regardless of what's happening uh, in this nation with lockdowns and whatnot. But anyways, I just want to talk to you real quickly <clears throat> about this concept and about uh, just some ideas, okay, about to minister digitally or to not minister digitally. This is a heated subject today uh, in the church. There's some people on this side of the spectrum that think it's like pretty much a sin at this point to still just do church by Zoom, to not open up your doors. And they feel very, very strongly. I am actually feel very, very strongly um, in that way. But then there's a whole other group on this end of the spectrum, you know, that still feel just fine with uh, ministering through Zoom, that's saying, hey, we need to protect the elderly, we need to protect the weak and the vulnerable, we need to obey the government, yada yada. So I would recommend some videos, you know, by some other people out there recently. Um, you know, John MacArthur, for instance, got a great one on Romans 13 about what the Bible says and what it doesn't say. You know, I just heard Mario Murillo do a, a great video the other day talking about Romans 13, where he made a good point. If we followed Romans 13 the way the church is today, then we wouldn't have America because America was founded by rebelling against Mother England and from splitting off as the, colony, uh, as the colonies and forming a new nation. So obviously, <clears throat> you've got to discern, you've got to interpret those things uh, correctly. But I want to talk about this from this standpoint. Okay, I think that obviously the Lord is using media digital ministry today. Um, you know, I'm reminded of a revival that happened in 2008 in America where there were incredible miracles, signs and wonders, the glory of God that was released through the airwaves, was released uh, through the television screens, through the computer screens, as people were watching that being streamed every day um, from around the world. People were watching it. I mean, I saw firsthand the fruit of that particular revival uh, that took place in Lakeland when I went to Korea. Um, <clears throat> I went to South Korea in the year 2012, and I met people all over that nation that had watched and had been blessed and, and even healed. I met three ladies in the same church that had received word of knowledge about barrenness, uh, you know, on the TV screen from that one night of revival all those years ago, and all of them conceived on the same night, all had babies that were the exact same age. You know, so the Lord wants to use media, uh, technology today, iPhones, as these different platforms. He absolutely wants to use them, like Paul the Apostles, handkerchiefs and aprons, to transmit the anointing through. But here's what we have to be cautious about, okay? It's not one or the other. I think we need both, okay? I think we need to continue to do digital uh, ministry because <clears throat> digital ministry, okay, takes place in what we call digital real estate. And we can't let the enemy occupy all of that real estate, right? We've got to take dominion, even when it comes to, you know, uh, the World Wide Web, even when it comes to social media platforms, even when it comes to all this stuff. I know we're fighting an uphill battle right there, and we're praying that, you know, more of a American ideals and principles will prevail in these places where they can't censor, you know, conservatives and just let BLM people run rampant and, you know, talk about the destruction of America. And yet, you know, they just allow their stuff to go viral. That's not right. So we're praying that American ideals and ideals of freedom and free speech, the First Amendment, we're praying that that prevails. OK, but we do need to engage in those places because those are battlefronts. OK, those are battlefields. That's real estate, and we can't just let the enemy occupy it all, all of that space. As long as we are able and as long as we're capable, we need to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ on Facebook, on YouTube, on the, these things, right? And we need to continue to develop as much as we can our email ministries and stuff like this. Um, but we cannot let that replace, okay, in-person uh, contact, okay, person-to-person ministry and gatherings, in-person gatherings. And I know firsthand the last month as I've been back on the road, okay, first time I've been on the road again ministering since March of this year, I know firsthand just how much is needed, just how powerful the anointing of the Holy Spirit comes when a group of people come together physically in a room together. I mean, you just can't duplicate it, okay? I don't care what you do. I don't care how anointed your Zoom meetings have been. There's nothing Okay, that can duplicate the, some of the atmospheres and environments I've been in over the last month in which we get a group of people together praying, you know, where the gospel is being preached and uh, people are having hands laid physically upon them. You just can't duplicate it. 
And that's what I'm most concerned. I'm concerned that Satan right now wants the church to uh, replace its in-person ministry with the digital format. And there's just certain things that the digital format will not suffice. It will not suffice, okay? And I think this is a tactic of Satan, personally. Um, I do believe this is something that he's pushing, something that he wants. Why? Because it's just like with currency, okay? The Lord doesn't want all currency to become digital currency because then it's easier to be controlled in a beast system, okay? It's easier to be controlled. You can turn it on or you can shut it off. I mean, you know, if all of your financing took place digitally, someone who's on the other end who has, has the control mechanism for that digital platform can shut off your flow. They can take your source of income away from you. Right, but as long as there's cash, there will always, even if there's tyranny, there will always be an underground market where there's billions of dollars of exchange taking place where the government can't track. And I know that's illegal in the United States, and I'm not saying you should do things under the table, but you know what? Um, that is something that 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 is a good thing too. I mean, a kid coming over and mowing the lawn for grandma and grandma being able to give him twenty dollars without having to report it to the IRS is a good thing. Okay. It's a good thing. <clears throat> but anyways, um, all that to say this, okay? The enemy wants to replace all currency with digital currency because he wants to control it. And the enemy would love for all church activity to take place online because it's easier to control. Okay, so I'm not saying one or the other. I'm saying both, okay? You need to make ministry in person, I believe right now, a priority, especially in America, because Satan would not, would love nothing more than to completely shut down everywhere the church's in you know person physical gathering together. Because there's something hap that happens when you come in the same room with a group of believers. You begin to pray. You can feel it in the atmosphere. In a way, it's transmitted through the airwaves. It's transmitted through the laying on hands, and it's in a way, I think that a lot of times lacks just in the Zoom setting. Right, the engagements lower, the engagements higher. Uh, in, in in a room full of people, I believe I believe the engagements many times lower, online. You know, so, anyways, that's just a couple of thoughts about that. You know, um, we want to make sure we follow the Lord on these things. You know, you follow the Lord individually for yourself. If you're a pastor out there, you're having a church and you have to make some of these decisions online or not online. You know, I would encourage you find a way to do both. Find a way to engage the digital market, real estate but not abandon the front of in-person meetings because I'm telling you, we need to be laying hands on one another. We need to be touching one another, okay, with the power of the Holy Spirit. And uh, we need to be in those rooms together praying. The Bible says we're two or three are gathered together in my name. There am I in their midst. I think he was talking about, you know, coming together in person there, in the midst, in an actual room, a physical location. Although we can agree together online, you know, I'm driving the point home majorly right now. Something special that happens in person. All right. So I pray this has been a blessing. God bless you. Hey, my name is Stephen Powell, and I want to thank you for watching this video on my YouTube channel. Go ahead and click the button right here, and you can subscribe to our channel so you get new videos as they come available. And also, you can go ahead and watch another video right now if you click this button over here. God bless you.